Welcome to London Christian High's Celebration of Learning for our second quadmester. As a staff team, we have been talking throughout this year about God's faithfulness to us, God's graciousness to us, and his provision and care. Teaching and learning through this time of pandemic has not been easy on anyone. All of our students, families, and staff have experienced some sort of loss during this time. And yet, even as we endure loss, we rest in the joy and the hope that are both ours through Christ. We have often referred to these encouraging and emboldening words from James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Living through a pandemic has been a unique trial for all of us. And through it, God is faithfully abiding with us and providing us with strength and courage. We hope that through this celebration of learning, you will see evidence of God's faithfulness in our students' determination and perseverance, and in our teachers' creativity and dedication to help our students engage in meaningful learning in spite of COVID restrictions. Can you imagine? Meaningful learning in a pandemic is truly evidence of God's goodness and cause for celebration. We hope that this celebration of learning is truly that, an opportunity to gather virtually together and celebrate our students' learning here at London Christian High. Enjoy. Hi, Mr. Rowe here, giving you an update on what we've been up to in our grade 12 biology class. One of the labs that we worked on together had us exploring cellular respiration, which is the process of creating chemical energy in each of our cells. The students are working with yeast cells at various temperatures to see which temperature causes the yeast to create the most foam. More foam means higher levels of cellular respiration. The students had a chance to flex their thinking and investigation muscles, and at the same time, they had a great opportunity to learn more about this beautiful and complex world that God has created. Students were also invited to map out the entire process of photosynthesis, the creation of chemical energy from sunlight and carbon dioxide. The process is fairly complex, so students dove in creating in-depth visual concept maps, which they then turned into puzzles. And with the puzzles finished, they could then piece them back together for a peer or myself as an aid to explain how this process occurs. I'm in ComTech and we designed a logo to encompass our class objectives. My logo is a pencil with a camera for the eraser and an audio wave in the pencil with the name ComTech on the sides. I did this because it gives a picture of the things that we use in, Comtech, in the ComTech course. Right now we have to choose a famous quote or Bible passage and create an image with the text that fits the meaning of the passage. I'm Libby, I'm in grade 10, and I am in Bible class with Ms. PK. We were given a verse about God and how he, like, how he, like, who he is, and we were supposed to find a word that described that and put it on the Google slide, and Quinn Lin put it all together with music. Today in class we were learning about how creation started in Genesis and we had to find verses that related, were really related to uh, before the fall in Genesis.
You have a shop class full of students who are supposed to be in the shop working. What do you do? Well, you send them home with a bunch of hand tools and you do an unplugged workshop. So this is all the cat. This is a cabin bed where we basically put cows in, where they are about to have a baby or get close up. This is the sick pen where we put all the cows that are sick, basically, or the ones that just tab so that they can clean out the rest of their afterbirth. This is the milking group, all the way from the end of the barn to right here. We move every one of these girls twice a day. Yeah, so this is the milking group, and then on this side right here we have all the heifer groups from youngest, youngest at the end to oldest right here. And then they just cycle through every time they get older, you move them over to the next pen. And then once they get old enough, you breed them, and then bring them over. You breed them, leave them in this pen, and then once they have a calf, you bring them over to the milking group. So I'm Jared and I'm in grade 11 and I'm in the grade 11 history class. Canadian military veteran, uh, Master Corporal Lisa Tucker Giza joined in our Zoom class and had a presentation for us. Uh, she talked about her experiences in Afghanistan and the things that she did while she was there. She talked about how it was very hard to distinguish who the enemy was since they don't wear uniforms. Uh, it really hit me that you could find yourself surrounded by danger and not know it, and I couldn't imagine the fear that our troops may have felt. It surprised me how the war on terror can be extremely unpredictable. Um, she also talked about how uh, going on patrols through streets, you have to look for little things, and those little things could be the meaning between life and death. And that really surprised me. That would be scary. We hear a lot about uh, different wars, but it was very different hearing a personal experience from a real veteran rather than just 
the overview of a story through the news. So she talked about uh, the family feeling that there was. So there was a lot of companionship between other soldiers. She talked about how she really missed that when she was discharged. The fact that people have come before us and has shaped the world that we know today. I think that learning about that is not only important, but also like really interesting. Uh, in class history, I liked a lot. And then going back to online, it was different, but I still enjoy it. There are a total of 10 animals. So I'm gonna start off with the life of pie animals. So I'm starting with the hyena. Yann Martel is the author of Life of Pi. And I believe that he wanted this animal to represent the evil that is in the world. Then this is the tiger. Um, that is Richard Parker. I think that Richard Parker was used to symbolize surviving no matter what the situation and being able to overcome whatever you put your mind to. And then the meerkat. I believe Yann Martel used it as a sign of comfort to Pi when he was on this carnivorous island. They were like a distraction for Pi and they in some way kept him safe. And then this is the orangutan. This is orange juice. I believe that Martel used orange juice in the novel to represent the kind, caring, and innocent side of Pi's mother. So orange juice reminded Pi of his mom. Now I'll go on to what the other animals signify to me. I chose the elephant to represent my mom because she's always collected elephant pieces around the house and my mom is very family oriented, gentle, and social. Moving on to my dad, which is the lion, which is why I created um, the same path going into the lion from the elephant. I think my, of my dad as more of a lion because the lion represents a strong independent leader and my dad is definitely a fearless leader in both our house and um, his job and he's taught me to be a good leader. And then going on to the panda, which I chose to represent my sister. She's very kind, calm, and gentle. She's a sweet, caring person, and she knows how to cheer me up. And going to my brother, I chose a bear. My brother has always wanted the best for me, and he is like an overprotective mama bear, and he always has my back no matter what. And then going on to the giraffe. I chose the giraffe to represent me because I have always loved giraffes and I've always thought of myself as like a outgoing person and um, giraffes, they can be very sweet and loving animals when they want to be and if they like the person and I feel like that represents me. And then going on to the bald eagle, I chose this to represent my best friend, Nikki. That's why the paths, we are sharing paths. The bald eagle represents a like strong, confident, independent, and beautiful, powerful bird. I think that we overlook bald eagles because it's easy to forget how beautiful God made them. And they are yeah, very protective and very beautiful. And I think of Nikki as all those things. So that's my zoo. Hope you liked it. My name is Karina Cameron and I am the senior art teacher at London Christian High. Usually what would happen is at the celebration of learning, we would have hundreds of our community members coming through the school and one of the things that they would see is our senior art exhibition. Each of our grade 12 students would have a booth and they would um, do a display of any art that they've done over the last four years at London Christian High that they were proud of. This year, 
without being able to offer them that experience, we got the opportunity to do a small display in the Connect Ed magazine. Uh, we also felt that this uh, video would be a great idea to talk about the, the future artwork that's in the Connect Ed. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy uh, these interviews with the students and um, yeah, may it bless you as much as uh, this opportunity will bless them. Um, hi, my name is Grace and then I created Independent Child, acrylic on the canvas. The main theme of my painting is mother, so I inspire from my parents, especially my mom. The theme of the painting is like when a child grow up to the auto, the auto should be go out to so social. So mom say to try to say goodbye to their child and then send a nice to their child to the wave. When you hear her independent child first, it's kind of sad mood, but I try to use bright color to not very sad mood. I try to make more happy and then more shiny kind of that mood. I'm Jonathan. My painting, uh, watercolor painting, was called Reach Out When You Can. I was inspired by an artist on Instagram uh, as well as just the people around me who I know have struggled with suicide and depression uh, to create the work that I did. I was trying to capture how the simple gesture of a greeting or a outstretched hand or some sort of simple gesture of friendship could do wonders in someone's life without you even knowing it. My name is Holly. Uh, the title of my work is The 428 PM Horizon. The medium is oil paint on canvas. I was inspired by going on walks all the time. It was a comfort place of mine. And I just like the colors of the sky during that specific night walking. I was just trying to capture um, like a warm, homey feeling. I wanted people to feel comfortable in this place, looking at this scene. I really wanted to portray the colors correctly, and I just wanted people to feel like God was with them. My name is Ethan. Uh, the piece I made is titled Melting Indefinitely, and I made it with graphite pencil on paper. Uh, my inspiration, I was inspired by the theme of death in this piece. Uh, just because it's something a lot of people can relate to. So I thought by making a piece of that, not uh, only can I spread a little bit of awareness about what people deal with when that happens, but also showing people the reality of it at one point or another. It's something we'll have to face, whether it's with people we know, it's we have, it's just a part of life. So I thought that I could represent that in a drum. One of the themes I was going for uh, with the candle and like in the title, using the word indefinitely. Uh, we all have a span of time, but we don't know how long it lasts. So that's why I thought the candle was a good way to represent that because a candle will slowly burn or burn faster than some other ones. And then using it definitely because there is no definite uh, end to it. My name is Anna. Uh, my piece is titled Gift and Joy and the medium I used was graphite on paper. This piece was created um, for a project that we did in class. We partnered with Compassion Canada. We were given pictures of sponsored children and um, I chose these, uh, the picture that looks a lot like my composition to work off of. Um, and the children were named Gift and Joy. They were in a village and they were considered cursed because they're twins and after they got sponsored by Compassion, they were considered lucky and welcomed and were welcomed back in the village because before that they'd been shunned. Um, so that's what inspired my piece. I wanted to communicate the feeling of um, joy and uh, the emotion of love in the composition. So I highlighted the way that um, the children are close in the composition to express that emotion. So these grade 12s were so special, and part of the reason why I hold a special place in my heart for them is because I've known them for four years. Though I didn't get to teach them in grade nine, having seen them come in in grade 11 and then leave in grade 12, I'm just really proud of how far they've come. Uh, we've had lots of laughs. They've, um, they've learned a lot in this open space um, 
that we've created for them to make. They've also done a fantastic job learning well, um, embracing that independence that comes with grade 12 art. They um, did a phenomenal job designing their third unit, their ISP unit. Their units that they designed were both, uh, both had depth, but also they demonstrated great skill and mastery over the mediums that they, um, that they created. Or they took a really um, big leap of faith into a medium that they had little experience with. And so I'm proud of their bravery and courage in doing that. So I connect very closely with my grade 12 art students and I wish them all the best in their future endeavors.